Hey everyone, I wanted to come on and talk about herpes because it seems to be a hot topic and the faces of it are so young, it's very concerning. Um, I want to talk about the two forms of herpes simplex. So we have uh, HSV1, which is herpes simplex virus 1, and that is the orally transmitted. Um, that's found higher in youth who've contracted it, usually through a non-sexual contact with saliva, okay? And um, some examples of that, I was I just made up my own, like pacifiers. A lot of times you have little kids, you might have a pacifier, you might just transfer over to another kid without thinking, just snatch it out of one's mouth to shut up the other one. Um, kissing your children in the mouth, other people kissing your children in the mouth, toothbrushes, sharing drinks. I hate that. Get a, um, I encourage all parents that you have young children. I know you just want to give them something to drink, but try to keep little cups on you so you can just pour it, you know, individually because we all have our own different type of body chemistry going on inside, and it's not something you want to really be mixing. Okay, even though they're siblings, it's not something you want to mix. Stop kissing your kids in the mouth. You know what that mouth do. Stop doing that. Okay, you're exposing your children, you're out here kissing, doing what you do, and you don't need to be sharing them type of germs with your children. That's what cheeks are for. I love cheeks, I love fat cheeks, kiss cheeks all day long. Um, I understand you know this is your child, you want to show love, but like I said, you know what that mouth do, so do not. Um, I would advise parents to refrain from kissing your children in the mouth. You know, especially if you know you've been out there. Like, that's not something you might want to be doing. You know, and especially if you have herpes. Because you have people who have herpes and they will, you, they want to show love to your children. But if you really want to show love to your children, don't kiss them in the mouth. Start right there. Okay? Um, I want to say also, like, sidebar, because we stigmatize a lot of people with, um, or uh, with the HSV-1, which is the herpes simplex virus 1. And a lot of times, like I told you, they, they contract that through no fault of their own, you know, through friends, through kissing a family member or something like that. So you want to be careful about stigmatizing people. I think it's wrong to stigmatize anyone, but, you know, a lot of times we go, oh, yeah, they got a cold sore. Yeah, she out here or he out here, you know, spreading around uh, STDs um, contracted that way. Okay, and then this is from the CDC or whatever, how you, f however you feel about them. Genital herpes, this is um, the S, the HSV2, herpes simplex virus 2, okay? Here is where the skin-to-skin -skin contact comes in. This is the uh, sexual way to obtain herpes, okay? I want to tell you that a sign that you can look for is uh, little sores or blisters, Right. And that would be around B. And I mean, if you're going to have sex with someone, I think it's OK to search around the body. You know, you're going to be intimate anyway. Right. So it's no nothing wrong with searching and looking and feeling around and asking some questions or whatever. If you have herpes and you are going through a flare up and I, I've never had I don't have herpes. I've never had any STDs. Thank God. But, um, you know, just from being educated through school and reading a lot of different publications, I know that um, when you're going through flare-ups, it could be, for a female, it could be discharge, painful urination, you know, uh, itching, a real, real bad constant itching or something like that. And for males, I guess it would be the same thing. You know, so you know when you're experiencing a flare-up is my point. So that's definitely not the time for you to be um, out being sexually active with anyone because it's even um, a greater risk for the person that you may have sex with to obtain, you know, herpes from you. Um, condoms are not 100% effective because they don't cover all of the area. They don't cover the whole organ, okay? And while there may not be a bump that's apparent to you, it could be something growing or going on underneath the skin. And by you rubbing and grinding up against that skin, it's a sure way for you to contact herpes. I mean, for you to, um, you know, get, to get herpes. Right? So, um, you know, be choosy out here. A lot of people are having sex parties and stuff. We just heard about the one that they were having in housing. Please don't think that, that that behavior is restricted to the projects because it's not. People are having sex orgies and parties all over the world, and they are not being honest. 
about it and they're going in there and they know they have diseases and they're spreading them with other people. You know, some people don't know because they don't bother to go get checkups. They don't bother to get tested. And that is a tragedy. You need to be tested. You know, it's a scary thing if you're out here tossing it up like that. It could be scary, but you it's better for you to know because once something just you're not being treated and it just takes over your system, it's only going to get worse for you. It's going to get worse for you. So, you know, if you have herpes, you want to cap it off anyway. You don't want to be out here just having sex and everybody down. You need to cap that off to one person that knows that you have it and willing to be with you. You also have people, too, that, um, you know, both partners may have it. And that could be a little tricky and scary, too, for me, you know, to my understanding, because I'm like, isn't that creating... Um, a stronger strand of the virus. I would think that, you know, because they both have it and, you know, sometimes people are using protection, sometimes not, is that building a stronger strand that, um, you know, medication won't be able to, you know, treat the symptoms for. And then what do you do? Does it just eat you alive? So uh, You have to be careful out here and definitely be honest uh, with these herpes. I told you about the signs. I told you about the orally, the way you can get it orally you know, through saliva and uh, the genital, you know, through skin to skin contact, you know, looking for sores, looking for cuts, looking for bruises, asking questions, getting tested, asking that person when the last time they were tested is very important because this disease is incurable. It's not something that you're going to go to the doctor and get a shot for. Like once you obtain herpes, it's just like having HIV or AIDS. It's like that's what you got for life in your blood. You know, and if you have it, it's your responsibility to let people know and to um, reduce the contact you have as far as like, um, you know, with saliva and things like that. Reduce that dental dam for the guys. Dental dam. And nobody should feel offended about being safe. Dental dam is good. You know, and you want to do it. Use the dental dam. It's OK. Some people like to use um, saran wrap. Or whatever, but you know, dental dam, if it is, it's just as good. But if you feel more safer with saran wrap, get saran wrap. You can cover more area with saran wrap, you know. And that's for um, you know, male and female. You want to use it, or if you guy wants to use the condom while the woman is, you know, performing um oral, you know, sex on him. So you because you can, you know, you don't want to. I don't know. Obtain this. It's very hard uh, for people to, you know, live a normal life. They feel stigmatized. They don't really want to tell anybody about it because they feel bad about it. But, you know, you should be telling people if you if you have it or whatever. And, and be safe out there. Wrap it up. Don't be mixing chemistries up with people. Get a cup. I, hate, I always hated that. Like, I had to have a cup. Do not pass me no bottle and everybody's chemistry is all up in the bottle. I I hate I hated to see people do that. Um so yeah, that's it guys. I'm Ray Ray. I like to spread awareness through the conversation in hopes that it sparks change and I'm out.